piano for a little bit. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Ha. Thank you, Lord. Well, welcome to the fire and glory outpouring. <laughs> that worship went a little bit long, but I like when it does that. Woo! Right into miracles. Amen. Well, listen, I'm, I'm excited. I got some, I believe I got some revelation tonight that'll mess you up. I was praying today, and I, I, that's what I've been asking the Lord for. I've been like, God, give us some stuff that's going to mark us forever. How many know that's what it's about, right? So I'm excited to share with you guys what I got. And uh, real quickly, before we jump into the Word, every night we receive an offering into the fire and glory outpouring. Listen, I don't need to go off on a big, long spill about anything. You see God's here. He's moving. There's no greater place to sow seed into than the move of God, than the Spirit of God. When God is breaking out in signs and wonders and miracles, and, and uh, you know, it's amazing. We've seen so much, uh, so many amazing radical testimonies of people that got debts canceled, um, people that get financial miracles that happen. But here's the way it works. Intimacy with God and obedience to His voice releases miracles. And so tonight, we're just going to sow into what He's doing, and I believe there's miracle release over you. And, and so if you need an envelope, put your hand up. The ushers will come around. They'll give you an envelope. And uh, if you're making out checks, you can make them out to Living at His Feet Ministries or L-A-H-F. If you're watching online, you can give by pushing the donate button on the website. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube, just go to livingatisfeet.org and uh, you can give there. But I believe that tonight there's an atmosphere in this place. There's an atmosphere of glory. There's an atmosphere of breakthrough. And and when you sow into the atmosphere, you reap that same realm. And I believe that God's releasing the miraculous tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. I love it when the pastors on the front row are like looking at their hands, seeing if oil came. Or, I mean, listen, we've been seeing some pretty amazing signs and wonders in this outpouring where, where people get oil, uh, they get oil and gold on their hands. And some people go, what does that mean? Well, it's a creative miracle anointing. You know, it's like God created man out of what? The dust of the earth. And what did he do? He breathed into that dust and it was created and life happened, right? And, and here's, here's what it means if you get gold dust on your hands, silver dust, any of that stuff. It's an outward sign of an inward impartation that you're receiving from God. And if you got it, it means you caught a creative anointing. And it means lay your hands on the sick and as many as you can. Because he wants to use you in healing. He wants to use you in the miraculous. And I think we'll see some of that stuff tonight. I mean, we just kind of do what we do and let God do what he does, right? We just, we're obedient to him. But here's the amazing thing is that he's fun. I don't know if you've discovered that about Jesus. I mean, I tell people all the time, if you're bored in church, that's your fault, not his. Because he's not boring at all. He's good. Woo! He's amazing. Listen, I'm telling you, you guys got to get out here tomorrow night, Friday night, Saturday night. I mean, I, I'm excited, I, you know, Woo, Jesus. Because I just feel like God is going to start doing miracles in a heightened way. That's one of the things that he told me. He said, I'm about to turn up the dial on the miraculous and this outpouring. Because it's time. It's time for breakthrough in Southern California in the realm of miracles. And not just little miracles. God wants to do creative miracles. You know, we've seen several people with cancer healed. Even one woman that had stage four cancer went to the doctor. They couldn't find it no more. Another woman that had, like, Lyme's disease that, that got totally healed. Doctors confirmed. Uh, you know, we've had several people that had birth defects from when they were, they were born, whether it's, like, dislocated hips, uh, you know, feet that were, um, that were deformed. And, and in the glory of God, they were recreated. How many, how many know that's pretty amazing, right? But see, that's who Jesus is. He's a miracle worker. Woo! Oh, I forgot. We're doing the offering. Go ahead. <laughs> you guys, when you're ready, go ahead and bring that up. We'll sow into the, the glory. If you need more time, you can take more time.
Texas. <laughs> Texas. <laughs> no, I'm laughing because James Gall just texted me something really funny. By the way, Kevin, put that. I'm glad that James texted me because it, it reminded me. June 9th through the 12th, we're going to actually have a, a Fresh Awakening event. And uh, we've got James Gall and Johnny Enlow as well as Moran and I and Jeff Jansen. They're going to be uh, a part of that. And so what we're doing is once a month, we're trying to do an impartation event to begin to release impartation to uh, people that are all over the world. And so we're doing a whole weekend dedicated to it. Now we're night 99 tonight. So this is actually an extension of the fire and glory outpouring. But what we're doing is bringing fathers and mothers of revival. And, and uh, listen, I don't know if you guys know, but James Gall gave the prophetic word that actually launched us into what we're doing here. You know, in, in January, he gave us a prophetic word. He said this. He said, God the Father is about to release a West Coast rumble. And from Tijuana, Mexico to Vancouver, Canada, the fire of God's going to fall, and it's going to break out first in San Diego. That's what he said. He said it's going to break out first in San Diego. Here we are 99 days or 99 revival nights later, and it's still going. And people are coming from everywhere. And so I'm excited to have James come because I feel that He's going to release an extension of, of really what he was prophesying, what he was seeing. And, and I don't know if you guys know who Johnny Enlow is, but Johnny's amazing. I mean, he releases words on revival all the time and Elijah List. And um, he's probably, listen, you guys, he, uh, I'm going to tell you this because I, I just think it's a really cool story. But this is the level prophet that, that Johnny is. He went to a president in a South American country. I won't say which one, but I'll let him tell you. But he went to a president in a South American country. And on national TV, they let him preach the gospel to the whole nation. And the reason why is because when he met with him, he said, this is the word of the Lord. Preach the gospel to the guy. And he said, just so you know that this is the word of the Lord. He said, the power grid in the entire nation is going to go out after I give you this word in five minutes. He gave him the word. Five minutes later, poof, the power grid went out in the whole nation for eight hours. Woo, come on, somebody. That's one way to get someone or some nation's attention, right? So anyway, yeah, Patricia King's going to be here June 5th. Yeah, she'll be here Sunday, June 5th. And I'm kind of sad I won't be here because we had to swap. <laughs> she said, I'll come and speak at the outpouring if Jeremy comes and speaks at my church. So you guys, uh, we'll take the outpouring over there. Amen. But, um, but listen, free registration, register and, and come out to that. But I'm excited tonight because, listen, God is going to... Oh, let's pray over this. Father, we thank you. I'm all over the map tonight, if you can't tell. It's one of those spirit flow nights. Lord, we thank you for the finances that have been sowed into the, uh, the kingdom tonight, Lord. And I pray, Father, that you would release multiplication over every seed. That, Father, you would cause a hundredfold return to come back to your people, Lord. And, and, Lord, we pray, Father, that as we sow into the glory of God tonight and we sow into what you're doing in this outpouring, that you would multiply back, Lord God, that, that anointing upon people tonight. And that you'd release a breaker anointing, Lord, to transform uh, lives, regions, nations, Lord. That, Father, you'd birth businesses, Lord. That you'd, you'd release the creativity of heaven. That, God, you would cause there to be a breakthrough on debts, Lord. That they'd be canceled in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, we release that blessing over the live stream as well as in this room. In Jesus' name. Amen. Woo. Wow, can we give the worship team a big hand clap? I love, love, love where we went tonight. That was awesome. Woo. <laughs> so listen, I, I, I felt like the Lord told me, I want you to talk about the glory tonight. And, uh, you know, I'm just, I don't know about you, but I'm just like, you know, that, that, that whole thing we were singing about hunger, like I'm starving for Jesus. You know, people, they, they'll tell me all the time, like, man, you must be so tired. You've been in 99 nights of revival. Like me and my wife, to be honest with you, are like at the best place. Like, I mean, we are, we, uh, listen, we got stuck in San Diego. 
I mean, like, you know, I, I can see if you got stuck in the polar Arctic, you know, like somewhere where you got to just live in an igloo underground or something. And, you know, but, but we got stuck in San Diego. But not only San Diego, we lived here for four and a half years before we were actually in L.A. So it was more like a coming home for us, you know. But, you know, it's amazing is we usually travel about 15 nations a year. I mean, I think last year, it's kind of crazy when I think about it, but last year I had four weekends off. In the whole week, in the whole year, and and you know I wouldn't burn out then either. I love it, but you know what's crazy is I love being here because all we got to do is just you know be with each other, be with Jesus, and then come to the meeting every night. And then every night this glorious worship happens, and the glory of God hits, and it's like, whoo! I've never felt more alive. You know, it's like I don't even got to go on an airplane to do this thing. It's like right here, right here. I mean, do you know it's a privilege to host the Holy Spirit? And, and, and listen, we got to get that because uh, when God starts to release a move of the Spirit, it's, it's different than, than just doing a normal meeting. It's, uh, you know, there, there are times and seasons with the Lord where he begins to highlight truths. He begins to release and manifest himself in certain ways. And, and, and listen, I don't ever want to be someone who misses my day of visitation. Who doesn't recognize what God is doing because it's so easy sometimes to do that when, you, when you're stuck in the natural realm and you think only naturally. And one of the things that I know that God wants to do is God wants to take us out of our head and into the heart. Listen, how many know he wants what you know about God up here to begin to flow down here, right? He wants you to begin to know him, not by head knowledge, but by heart knowledge. And we're in a season where he's releasing his glory and he's releasing his fire. And, and you got to understand something. What we're seeing in this season is the power of the cross. Listen, how many know it's all about Jesus, right? How many know Jesus died on the cross? He rose again from the dead. And when he rose from the dead, listen, we don't live from the cross. We live through the cross. We live in a place where, where, where the, the stone was rolled away and he came forth in resurrection life, resurrection power. And I believe that God is raising up a generation that won't just die for him, but they'll live for him. They'll live for him. Listen, they'll die to the flesh, but they'll live. They'll live for the presence of God. They'll live out of a place of encountering the presence of God. And, and I love it because, um, you know, God wants to take us to a place where the glory of God is not just something that we, uh, we, we talk about as like a buzzword. I mean, I don't know if you've been around uh, too many uh, prophetic camps, but I've been around some and I've done a lot of conferences. And sometimes, you know, it's like glory. You know, people say it like a religious word. You know, it's like we got these buzzwords in the church like revival, you know, and we, we say all these things. And it's like, do we really even know what we're asking for or what we're talking about? You know, because if you were to go, hey, what's glory? You know, some people would be like, oh, you know, man, those goosebumps that I get in worship. No, not really. I mean, that's a sign that he's in the room, but that's not the glory, right? I mean, all the miracles that happen tonight, that's not the glory either. See, those are byproducts of what happened when the glory shows up. Who's the glory? The glory is the person of God. The manifest person of God. When he shows up, supernatural things happen. When he shows up, revelation begins to flow. All of a sudden, we can tap into a realm that we haven't been tapping into previously before. And see, that's what I'm excited about for what God is releasing in this fire and this glory outpouring as well as other outpourings that are happening in the earth right now because this isn't the only one, but it's one of many that are happening. But here's what God's doing. God is birthing things in the spirit. And I love it because we've got at least three or four words from legitimate prophetic voices. People like Lou Angle, Bobby Connor, even uh, you know, James Gall. Um, different, different ones that, uh, that, that have been with us. Even Jeff Jansen, he didn't know much about some of the stuff that was prophesied before he joined us in the outpouring. But they all prophesied this one thing. They said, San Diego is the birth womb. They said San Diego is the birth womb of revival and, and, and that God, it's going to release it into Southern California. It's going to release it everywhere. Uh, you know, it's going to spread across the United States. And, and, and so what does that mean and what does that look like? Right? How many know that's probably the question? I mean, some people go, well, what's the point of having meetings after every, you know, night after night after night? You know, what, what, why, would we, why would we do that? Well, here's the thing is, uh, you know, Miranda, she quoted it out of Isaiah 55. It, it says this. It says, "Woo, seek the Lord while he, uh, seek the Lord while he may be found. See, there's times and seasons where he shows up. Now, listen, there's the truth. He's always in you. He, he lives inside of you. Like, you, you know, you're not going to lose him. I mean, listen, you're saved. But you got to understand something. There's times and seasons when he starts to show up in a special way corporately. 
And his glory begins to come and he begins to mark a people uh, 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 and he begins to release favor. He begins to release the, the realm of miracles. He begins to release signs and wonders. He begins to release his presence. But what's the whole purpose of it? So that we can reveal the love of God on the earth. So that everywhere we go, we release the goodness of God and people see it tangibly. But really what I believe he wants to do is he wants to release an abiding glory to the church in this season. See, he wants you to carry glory on your life so much so that everywhere you go, it's tangible, it's around you, it's like a, it's like a sphere uh, of, of influence that you carry of the king of glory. And, and, and it's like Peter, he walked down the street, people getting healed off their sick beds and their couches, and, and he didn't even like, you know, put the hands on them, it was just his shadow touched them, they were raised up. See, that's what I believe God is doing in this next move of the Spirit. And here's what's beautiful about it. It's not just for the forerunner. It's not just for people behind pulpits. It's not just for the one. It's for the body of Christ. It's for the church. God's raising up an army of those that will hear the voice of God, walk in the supernatural. There'll there'll be a testimony of supernatural intimacy with Jesus. People will see the boldness on their lives and they'll marvel at the church. How I many know that that's probably something we need to see more of in the church, right? You know why I know? Because I've, I've had encounters with people where, the, where they laughed about Jesus. And I remember one time I had an encounter with a witch. This might sound crazy, but this really happened. I had an encounter with a witch. I was at this huge hot, this huge hot tub. In a, in a, I was staying in Florida with a, a friend of mine. We were on vacation. And um, this was back in the day. But I was sitting, you know, back in the day before Moran and I were even married. And I was sitting there with my friend. We were on vacation. It was one of those huge hot tubs with, like, you know, I'd say you could put 20 people in it at a resort hotel. And we're sitting there. And there's this lady across from me. And the Holy Spirit says, hey, ask her if she's spiritual. And so I thought, okay, sure, why not? And I said, hey, are you spiritual? And then I wasn't prepared for what happened next. She goes, oh, yeah. And she just went on and on and on about what she believed. And listen, it was like witchcraft, black arts, occult, like all that stuff. I mean, it was like nasty, you know, it was just spewing out of her. And, and then she turned the question around. She goes, so what do you believe? And I said, well, I believe in Jesus. And she went, ah, ha, 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 Jesus. She goes, he ain't got no power. I've been to church. Well, you ain't been to my church. <laughs> but you know what? The world's looking for something. And, and, and you know what? I, I was like, God, what do I do? She just totally talks you down. And he said, no, just keep talking with her. He, he, and, and, and so we start talking. And here's the thing. I, was just, I, I just kind of had this awakening in my heart where, where the first time I went to India, I saw blind eyes open, deaf ears hearing. I saw cripples walking, tumors dissolve. I mean, God was doing all these miracles. And so I told this lady, I said, listen, God, Jesus got power. I told her about all those miracles. And she goes, so what? The yogis can do that too. And I was like, the yogis? I'm like, what are you talking about? And she's like, you don't even know what a yogi is, and you call yourself spiritual? And I said, listen, I said, I thought yogi was a bear on TV when I was a kid, all right? <laughs> I said, I don't know what you're talking about right now. And, and she just, she looked at me like I was an idiot. And, 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 and then at that point, it was kind of like we were arguing a bit. And, 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 you know, then the manager of the hotel comes out, and he goes, hey, you guys are being way too loud about this whole thing of religion. He's like, you know, I think it's time that you guys go to your rooms and, and kind of break this up. And he goes, but if you want to argue, my office is open. Like this guy wanted like Jerry Springer, you know. And so I'm like, what the heck? And the Lord says to me, do not leave without praying for that lady. And her name was Jennifer. And I said to her, I said, hey, Jennifer, I know you don't believe that Jesus has power. But I said, listen, I want to pray for you anywhere. If he didn't got power, then it shouldn't matter to you, right? And I, see, I've, I use like reverse, you know, on him. I'm like, you don't think there's no power? So then what does it matter? Like, let's just do this thing. And, and, and so she goes, yeah, that's right. He ain't got no power. And, and, and she takes my hand and puts both her hands on my hand while I'm, you know, supposed to pray for her. And when I do that, she starts going, and, and you know what's crazy is, is uh, she starts going like this. And as she's doing that, she goes, oh, I forgot to tell you something. You know, it turns out the woman's a witch. That's, you know, that, she just, you know, wanted to make sure I knew that. And, and she's going, well, you know, and I'm thinking, woman, I've been to charismatic Christianity. I've seen people flop harder on the floor than this, you know. And I, I, I just, I, I said, okay. And she's going like this, doing her thing. And, and I didn't know what to do. Like, what do you do when you're praying for a witch, right? And so I said, Lord, what do I do? And I saw a snapshot picture, like in a vision of a rose. And out of my mouth came this prophecy. I said to her, I said, listen, even though you don't know the Father in heaven, he loves you and he sees you beautiful as a rose because he created you in beauty to know him. And when I said that, the power of God hit this witch. And she goes, ah! 
And she starts screaming like at the top of her lungs, manifesting. And she's screaming, you're blocking my powers. You're blocking my powers. No one's ever blocked my powers. And, and, and I'm going, this is Jesus. You know, like. And she got completely hit in front of like 30 people at this hot tub. And they're all just like. And, and I step back, and I don't know what to do. She's like, oh, I'm on fire. I'm on fire. And, and back in those days, I, I, I was really wild. I mean, I'm still kind of wild, but it's all right. I, I, I was like, I used to throw fireballs in church. Like, just in fun, in the Holy Ghost, you know, like, <laughs> when it would hit people and they'd, they'd get hit. Anybody ever seen that? And, and so I said, God, can I throw a fireball on her? And he said, have fun. And I went, <laughs> when I threw a fireball, it hits her. She goes, ah, backs in to a chain link fence, screams, and runs out. And we never saw her again. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there with my friend, and he's looking at me like, no, you didn't, man. Like, that was crazy, you know. And, 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 and some people, they go, well, did she get saved? And I go, well, I'm pretty sure she probably would have had to have. Because the one thing I know about people that walk in that kind of a realm of witchcraft is they pride themselves on power. So I really doubt that she's going to go to the next person she knows and be like, hey, I got the second greatest power. Because there was this one time this guy threw a Jesus fireball on me and I got knocked into the fence. No, listen, that's a seed sown into the heart. Woo, Jesus. And listen, I'm telling you, there's a generation coming who's not going to be afraid of the devil. They're not going to be afraid of witches. And I, I mean, you know what's so funny is I, I was ministering at Rick Joyner's in, uh, this was several years back at Morningstar, and I was preaching in one of his biggest conferences with Heidi Baker, and, and, and when we were there, there was like 3,000 people, and he comes to me and he goes, hey man, he goes, you know, you're on Friday night, but could you do like Thursday morning with our high school to like, you know, middle school to preschool kids? And I was like... Sure, why not, you know, and so they, they actually have like all the way from, you know, like we're, we're talking three years old all the way up to like, you know, graduating high school in a school that they, they have in Morningstar. And so I go there and, and I just, I've never really like been a good planner, you know, I just said, okay, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to talk to them about? And so I get in there and of course all the older kids are on the right side and they're like, you know, they want nothing to do with what I'm talking about. And I'm, I'm just talking about miracles and they're sitting there like seeing it. Tell me something new, you know. And the Holy Spirit says, tell them the witch story. Now, I didn't think about the little kids. That, that might be crazy. I just told it. And then I told the little kids, come on, grab your fireballs. And I'm going to throw them at the older kids. And they're like, phew, phew. Like the, the little kids outnumbered the older kids. And it was so funny because a lot of the older kids didn't want to join, but they started getting hit. <laughs> and they're like, stop that. And the little kids, they're relentless, man. They're you know, and, and, and you know what happened is that night I go to speak, you know, and this lady comes up to me and she goes, were you preaching at the school today? And I said, yeah. And she goes, did you tell that story about a witch? And I went, uh-oh. She goes, my little six-year-old came home today. And you know what he said to me? And I said, what? He said to me, mom, witches are real. And, 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 and she goes, what? And he goes, but don't worry. We don't got to be afraid. We got fireballs. That's what he said to her. And he's like, he's like, Jesus is so much greater. He's like fireballs from heaven, you know. See, but that's the generation that's coming up. They ain't got religion. They, they, they just got the glory on them. These little kids, I mean, listen, they see greater miracles than I do. Woo! I, I remember back in the day when I first started preaching, man, I would talk about miracles and some guy's deaf ear would open. People were like, ooh, ah. Now little kids are like, oh, is that all? You know, praying for kids, praying for people out of wheelchairs that get healed. But how many know that's the way it's supposed to be? So God wants us to preach ourselves out of a job so that the next generation goes higher than, than the previous generation. And, and, and I'm excited because why is God releasing a move of the Spirit? Because he's going to release tangible glory that's going to rest on the church and it's going to explode even to the point where people in darkness at times will have no choice but to come into the light. Because there's going to be such a realm that walks with you. Who is that? The Holy Ghost. I mean, I love it. I got friends that uh, you know that are in Santa Rosa, California, and they they do these booths at New Age fairs. And you know what they do is they 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 carry the glory of God into the New Age fair. And and you know one of my friends, her name's Annie. She's from Santa Rosa. She's a you know um, she she does paintings and all kinds of things. And one time the Lord said to her, Hey, go into your garage and just um, paint what I show you. And she starts having open visions of people's faces. 
She just starts painting the faces. She painted like maybe seven or eight of them. And then the Lord says to her, when you go to the New Age Fair, take this one, this one, and this one and put them on display. And she's like, okay, I don't know why, but I'll do it. And she goes, and, and here's what happens is the, the, the one who actually won that year before, she's really like, um, you know, into witchcraft and, and really just dark in, into darkness. And, and, and she had won the actual art show the year before. She walks by her table and sees her face on the canvas and when she sees her face she goes what is that like what's going on right now you know and 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 the you know my friend goes well what's good and she looks she's like oh oh wow you know and here's the thing she was with a few witches and when they came into the room they lost their power they could when they got into the room they could not they're like they even said to her where's our spirit guides like what's going on right now like what's going on i can't i can't connect and and our friends were like jesus loves you and he loves you so much that he showed us your face before you came. And look at that. And, and the lady freaks out. She's like, I even have that shirt. Well, she got saved. And you know what happened is the glory of God manifested in that, that, that demonic place. And the reality of the kingdom of God flooded in there and expelled the darkness. Just, just kicked it right out. Just poof, right? See, what am I talking about? I'm talking about a generation that's going to bring the glory to a generation. But you know what? It ain't going to look the way it's looked in the past. It's going to look counterculture. It's going to be through art. It's going to be through music. It's going to be through uh, every avenue, even business. I mean, listen, it can come even through baking. I've told this story several times. I, I, I met a woman in England that bakes cookies, prays for them, and sends them to cancer patients. And when they eat it, they get healed. I mean, that's like, that's, uh, you know... Some people, you're like, what? Listen, if you got faith for it, God will use you. I mean, God wants to break the box of what we think and how we put him in parameters and limitations. And he wants us to begin to believe for greatness. How many know that the Bible says greater things than these? You will see why. Because he goes to the Father. Woo! Greater works, Jesus. Ha ha. Could you imagine? Just take the cookie to the dead guy. Just put it in his mouth. You know, like, he, 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 he comes back to life. <laughs> Come on, why not? Woo, Jesus. I'm having fun tonight. I haven't even got to my thing yet. but See, Jesus wants to give us more. And, and listen, why is he releasing revival in this season? Why, why do we need to respond when God releases outpouring? I'll tell you why. Exodus 33 tells us that Moses... Moses was an amazing man of God. He had encounters with God all the time. And you know what happened is God takes him and the Hebrew children out of Egypt, out of the world. How many know that whenever you're led of the glory, he'll lead you out of past life. He'll lead you out of sin. He'll lead you out of darkness. He'll lead you into a place where you have an opportunity to encounter his glory. But listen, you have to take the opportunity. You can sit back and be complacent and go, I don't know. I just don't feel like going tonight or doing that. Or I don't feel, you know, it's like, come on, man. We go to church once a week. Like, listen, God wants to totally bless you, but we got to get hungry. And, and, and listen, I, I'm not, I, I, I honestly don't want to heap condemnation on people. I want you to get a revelation of why we're doing this. And, and here's what happens in Exodus 33. It's very clear. It, it, Moses takes a tent and he, he, he puts it outside of the camp. And the Bible actually says far outside of the camp. And it says he called it the tabernacle of meetings. And, and, and as he put that tent out there, the Bible says that those, it says Moses as well as those who sought the Lord went to that place. And they got into what? The glory of God. Because the Bible says that when Moses would go to the tent of meetings, it says that, that every single day, it says that the Hebrew children would watch from afar off. The, they would watch the man of God and a select few who were hungry. They would go into the tent of meeting and from afar off they would watch. And, and, and God's glory, the cloud would come down and it would fill that tabernacle. And as it filled the tabernacle, Moses, Joshua, you know, whoever else it was, it's not clear, but it says those who sought the Lord went there. It it says the glory came down and it rested in that place. And then and and then Moses would come out. But it says that that most of the people would watch from afar off and bow down from their tents inside the the safe place of the camp, you know, and and they they didn't want to go out there and meet with God. 
And I want to just say this is God a lot of times will birth revival outside your camp. He'll birth revival outside your home group. He'll birth revival outside your church. He'll birth revival outside your box. And he does it on purpose. Why? Because he wants to see who's hungry. He wants to see who will go out of their way and seek his heart. Who will go, uh, those that will uh, sought after his presence. Woo. And see, I'm telling you, whenever he breaks out with revival, he'll always test the hearts. And I want to just say this. Revival never comes at a convenient time. It never does. In fact, God never shows up at a convenient time. I mean, no, they were talking to Jesus about that. He said, there'll be one that we're plowing next to the other. He'll be taken up. There'll be another that we, you know, working in the field and the other one will disappear. I mean, listen, there were people that got left behind. Why? Because they weren't ready. And I'm not talking about rapture theology. I'm just saying that you got to understand that God shows up in times and seasons. Some people will see it. Some people will not. And you know what happens is I don't want to be the one on the outside when something explodes and, 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 and be like, oh, man, like uh, I should have been there. Now there's thousands of people out there and like things are happening. The nations are coming and, and I could have been right in the ground level of this thing carrying it. You don't want to be the one bowing down from afar going, I don't know. It doesn't look like my church. Oh, I don't know. That just doesn't have the same feel as our worship. You know, that's just too long. I mean, listen, God wants to break your box. And sometimes he'll put it outside your camp and then he'll seek you. He'll, he'll see how hungry are you. And, and here's the beautiful thing. Those that go outside the camp, they get impartation. They get activation. I mean, why does God release revival so that he can impart to you? So that he can activate you. So that you can begin to be changed by the presence of God. And as he changes you, you're never the same. Before you know it, there's things happening in your life that were not happening before. But before you know it, you're, you're catching the fire in a way that you didn't have on your life before. And, and it's contagious everywhere you go. And, and, and what's amazing about this is that activation happens in the presence of God in the glory. Activation happens. Uh, stirring happens. I mean, uh, I, I, I just, I'm so stirred in this season. Because I've, I'm, I've been preaching for 13 years, full-time ministry. Gone to 15, or 50 nations. I mean, preached the gospel all over the world. And, and you know what's crazy is, I, I mean, there has been so many wild things that have happened in this outpouring. Like, it blows my mind. I, fragrances of God coming, uh, you know, night after night. Oil and gold and, and, and cancers and this and that. I mean, I've seen uh, bigger crowds, uh, you know, because uh, I go to a place that they plan for three days. But do you know when you get to night 99, you see who the hungry are? When you get, and, and, and what's amazing is there's hungry people here. On a Wednesday night, you've come out and you're in this room. Why? Because you want something. You're in this room. Why? Because like the worship was talking about. Listen, you know, a lot of times how I know how to move into what I'm called to move into in the service is I just listen to what worship's saying. Because how many know out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, the word of the Lord is established. And tonight is all about hunger. It's all about hunger. And then Miranda got up and she was reading something about Samuel in the cloud, you know, um, out of Psalm 99. And what's funny is today when I was with the Lord, he said, I want you to preach on Samuel. You know, I was praying. I said, God, what do you want to release in, in, in the meeting tonight? And he said, I want to release, I, I want to release the childlikeness of God that gives people access to the glory. I want to, I want to release a, a, a freshness where people have grown dim in their spiritual sight and people have become like Eli, where, where they've, they've neglected the lamp of the Lord. They've neglected intimacy with God. They've, they've fallen back and fallen away from their first love. He said, I want to light the flame again. And, and, and he began to speak to me and he said, but people have to understand the purpose of why I do this thing. Listen, why was God releasing glory outside the camp? Listen, there's 12 tribes in that camp. And, and, and those who sought the Lord would go to the tabernacle of meetings. And here's the whole purpose. They would get it and then go back and affect their tribe. Yeah. Whoo, come on, somebody. So God wants to affect Los Angeles. Whoo! He wants to infect, you know, Pomona. He wants to infect Orange County. He wants to infect San Diego. He wants to infect Texas. He wants to infect your city, your state. He wants to affect your, your, your generation. But he, here's how things are spread by contact. By contact. You know, I mean, how many know that most natural airborne sicknesses are spread by contact? 
Well, listen, I want you to understand something. We're not releasing sickness. We're releasing glory. But the principles are the same. You get into an atmosphere, right? If someone can sneeze and give you a cold, how much more can the fire of God, how much more can the presence of God activate you when you come into contact with it, right? So he wants you to carry something on your life. And, and, and it's something that sets you apart from who? The people of the world. See, I'm telling you, how many know we should look different? We should look different than the people in the world. We shouldn't look like them. If you look like them, then you're in trouble. How many know we're of the world? Not, uh, uh, listen, we're in the world, but not of it, right? And, and God wants to release signs and wonders. Woo! People who are for signs and wonders. And I want to just look at this because here's, here's the thing. God wants, to, God wants you to get into his atmosphere of glory, what he's pouring out, because he wants you to take it back to your church. He wants to take it back to your home group. He wants to take it back to your school. He wants you to take it back to your workplace. Wherever you go, glory can break out. It can break out. And, and, and what I'm talking about, though, is fire. See, why does God want to release fire? Because fire comes and it removes every hindrance. It removes every hook. It removes everything that is a struggle in natural flesh that is in your way of encountering a holy God. I don't know about you, but I want to encounter Jesus. And you know what? There's things in my life that are still in process right now. I, I, listen, some people don't. They're like, did the preacher just say that? Yes. I mean, no, none of us are perfect, Right? I mean, listen, uh, we're all in process. There's things in our lives that trip us up that, that are there. And, and you know what happens is as soon as you think you made it, it's like an onion. He starts peeling something else. You're like, God, really? Like, I didn't know that was there. And, and, but the beautiful thing about God is he'll just peel it and, whoop, and then it's gone. But you know what, though? It, it, all of a sudden, he releases glory to you. Every, every layer he removes, there's a layer he puts on. Woo! And once he starts removing all of it, then who knows what the level of glory you carry is. But see, that's the season we're in, fire and glory. He's releasing fire from heaven so that we can walk with him and we can talk with him and we can manifest him to people around us. And, and he's releasing fire and glory so that we would have an awakening of hearing his voice. And see, here's, here's the beautiful thing. I don't know about you. Who wants to hear the voice of God? I want to hear the voice of God. I want to see in the spirit. I want to encounter God in a real way, just like the Bible talks about. I want to, I want to encounter him so powerfully. And, and, and here's the key. It's his presence. And here's what's amazing about, um, about what I want to talk to you about tonight is Samuel was a young man. He was, he was probably, a lot of people believe, you know, seven, eight years old as a boy. And he, and he encountered God in a profound way that changed an entire nation. See, and that tells me that God's not limited to age. I mean, listen, he used King Josiah, who was eight years old as well. And, and, and there's a generation that's coming and that's here now. There's young people in this room. You do not have to wait till you're 52 to be used by God. God wants to use you right now. And listen, there's another generation that, you know, you might be a part of the older generation. You don't have to sit back and relax and say, well, I don't have to do nothing anymore. No, you need to. He's going to refire some of you. Woo, Jesus. But, but I want you to see this because in Samuel chapter, um, 1 Samuel chapter 3, look at this. It says, Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. And it came to pass that in a time while Eli was lying down in his place, he, and his eyes had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, and before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle, the Lord, woo, I'm getting hit already. And, and it says this, it says that the Lord was with Samuel while he was lying down, and it says the Lord called to him, and he answered, here I am. So he ran to Eli, and he said, here I am, for you called me. And he said, I did not call you, go lie down again. Then the Lord said to Samuel again, Samuel. So Samuel rose and he went to Eli and he said, here I am for you called me. And he answered and he said, I did not call you. And it goes on another time and he says, listen, I think the Lord's calling you, Samuel. He says, why don't you say, speak for your servant is listening next time. And, and I want to just say this, is that Samuel didn't even yet know the Lord yet. That's what the Bible says. He, he, he didn't even know God yet, but God was speaking to him. How many people in the world are like that? They're having dreams. They're having visions. They're having encounters with God. How many know that God's master plan is what? The spirit of God. How many know that the Bible says in the last days, God will pour out his spirit on all flesh. It says all flesh. And then it says sons and daughters. 
How come we're the second mentioned people group in that prophecy? Because God's plan is not just the church. God's plan is all of humanity. All of mankind. And what he said, in last days, God's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men will have visions. Your old men will have dreams, right? And, and, and uh, listen, you got to see this because it, it, it's amazing what happens is here is Samuel. Woo, Jesus. He's, he's lying around where? The ark of God, the, the presence of God. He's, he's, he's positioned himself and he doesn't even know it. Here's Eli, the, the high priest of the day, and he's like lost all his sight. He's grown dim. He's grown weak. In fact, the, the light of the lamp of God is going out in his generation. And listen, God forbid the lamp of God goes out in any generation. And you know what happens is God cannot find someone to actually be his voice. And so he, what he does is he comes to a little boy, shows up to him, and, 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 and he tells him, he says, you know, Samuel, three times. And finally, the, uh, the high priest comes to himself and goes, oh, I think God's speaking, man. You know, just say, just say, speak for, you know, your servants listening. And, and then the amazing thing that happens is it, it says in verse 10, it says, Now the Lord came and stood and called Samuel uh, as he did the others. Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, speak for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, behold, I will do something in Israel at which both the ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. And it, it goes down to the bottom and it says this. And it says that God was with Samuel and not even any of his words were would fall to the ground. How many know that's pretty powerful? That if you had such a prophetic anointing that every time you prophesied it happened? How many know you'd have to have a pretty amazing intimacy with Jesus, right? But this boy grew up in the presence of God. He grew up in the presence of God. He grew up in the temple of the Lord. He grew up hearing the voice of God. And and listen, God wants us to begin to put a, a, a high value on hearing the voice of God. He wants us to begin to put a high value on, on what? The ark of God. What's the ark of God? It's the glory of God. Amen. It's the person of God. It, when, when the Holy Ghost, when the person of God, when the, the glory begins to show up, then God's goodness, God's mercy, God's compassion, uh, God's favor begins to flow in our lives. And, and how many know that's what Moses saw when he said, Lord, show me your glory? It says that all of God's goodness passed him by. And he proclaimed to him the name of the Lord and his favor, his goodness, his kindness, his compassion. And, and, and then he said to him, he said, I'll bless those whom I bless even down to a thousand generations. How many want to be blessed, right? I mean, it always cracks me up, you know, hashtag blessed. It's like, well, what's that mean to you? Is that because you got a taco? Like, I mean, listen, like God wants to give you himself. He wants to activate you in a place where, uh, where there is no widespread revelation. And uh, I mean, I meet people all the time, you know, that come from some city and they go, well, there's no Christians that hear the voice of God in my town. There ain't nothing happening. It's dead as a doornail. Well, then uh, awake it. You know, uh, bring awakening to it. You know, bring revival to it. Because I guarantee if you go find the hardest case and get them saved, it's going to say something to the city. I guarantee if you start to get words of knowledge, you start to hear the voice of God, you start to release the power of God, it's going to start shaking hell in that place and heaven's going to start coming and there's going to be an atmospheric shift. And I actually think in a city where it's all dark, it has the greatest potential for revival. Because if there's no Christians there and you go there and you, up, you, know, you, know, you, you overthrow the kingdom of darkness, how many know that revival can break out powerfully there, right? See, the places where revival doesn't break out is where the religious people are at. See, God wants us to understand something. We're not in this thing for a meeting. We're not in this thing for offerings. We're not in this thing for any of that stuff. Listen, that's religion. We're in this thing because we want to see a move of God that's going to shake this generation. And listen, I, I know, I know that, that some people, you know, they look at things and they judge things by past moves of God. You can't do that in this next season. Because to be honest, we don't even know what we're doing yet. We just hear the Lord saying, be obedient, keep going, you know. Keep going. You know, and it's like, uh, really, God? Like, keep going? He's like, keep going. I mean, if you're wondering what the, uh, you know, uh, where, where we're going with this thing, well, we just feel like the Lord says keep going. That's the only step we have. Well, what does it mean? We don't know yet. The baby's still being birthed. But when it comes out, we'll show you. But one thing I do know is I don't want to abort the baby before he's born. Right? And, and, and so here's the thing, you know, Samuel was young. He was this young man that heard the voice of the Lord. He became the most accurate prophet in all of Israel. And, and, and here's the amazing thing is that his gift was unlocked in the presence. 
It was unlocked in the presence. And I can tell you, God wants to unlock your gifting in his presence. And that's why we're here. That's why we're doing what we're doing. Because, uh, listen, if I was to be honest with you, it's not so much about this preaching stuff that I'm doing right now. It's about the worship. It's about the realm of, of, of what we were doing. Uh, listen, I, everything that's been happening in this outpouring comes right out of worship. We've seen so many of the, the most, uh, you could go back, there's 99 nights, but you could go back, there's probably 30 nights of the 99 where, where we just stood up and we're like in the middle of worship and we're like, God's releasing miracles. And it was like the, the Lord took a sledgehammer and went and just smash the spirit of darkness and, and people getting healed from all kinds of sicknesses and diseases. I mean, we've had times where we lined up 20 people in this room and they gave their testimony. And, and, and some, that was before we even got to transition. And even tonight, you know, like we're, we're just trying to be sensitive. But like I'm, I'm starting to recognize like, hold up, man, this thing's about worship. If we're going to move in a place of power, let's do it right out of worship because that's actually where God's resting upon. See, when you do it the way God wants to do it, access happens, access happens, access, access to his voice, access to his spirit. People go, how do you get words of knowledge like that? Well, we're just in his presence, so they come. And it's about just opening your ears, really. It's about just opening your hearts to what he's already saying. And, and, and I really believe that God wants to release that realm. And, and listen, when you encounter his glory, it changes you. I remember one time I was in Hudson's Hope, British Columbia, Canada. And, and we're speaking there. And I was staying in the creepiest house I've ever been to. This guy had ten times the amount of uh, animal heads on, in his house than, than some people I know. I mean, and I was staying in a basement, which was his trophy room. And this guy hunted for like 20 years. And he had every kind of thing you could think of on the walls, like looking at you. And try being in the bed like, okay, you know, like 47 eyeballs looking at you. And I'm at this place, and it's in Canada. It's a great place, and, and I'm preaching, and I, I'm not preaching till the second night. And the first night, one of my friends is preaching, and he's an amazing minister, and he'll actually be here next week. Uh, he, he's coming down to visit from, from all the way up north. And, uh, and, and so anyway, uh, I'm, I'm preaching with him, and he's, uh, he's put the conference on. And I remember the first night, the worship was so amazing. And, and I went back to my, my room, and I just was creeped out by the animals, but I was also still hungry for God. I don't know if you've ever done that, but, you know, it's like I, I got back to my room. I went, God, you know what? Like, thank you for what you did tonight. I love the miracles that happened. I love the, the people that got healed. But, like, I need more of you, and I need it now. Like, I'm still hungry. And I, I told God, I said, I'm just for 20 more minutes before I go to bed. I'll put my headphones on, and I'll just worship you because you're just so worthy of praise, God. And I put my headphones on, and, and you know, this is, uh, this is years ago, and, I, and I'm worshiping the Lord in my room. And all of a sudden, something zapped me. It was like, and I was like, what the heck? And I opened my eyes, and there was a real glory cloud in the room. Like, I'm talking like cloud in the room, cloud. Like, like I could touch it, and it, it, like a cloud in the sky in my room, and it comes on my bed, and I'm laying on it, and it's like electric, and I'm going, oh, what the heck's going on? I, I freaked out. And I'll tell you, when the supernatural happens, this doesn't work. Yeah. You know, and it's, uh, some people go, what? wait, 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 you encountered a cloud. Yeah, so did Peter, James, and John. I mean, this is biblical stuff. The Old Testament, the glory cloud would come down into the room so heavy that people couldn't even stand to minister. And there are places in God that are so intimate with him that he begins to share with you his secrets. That he begins to give you encounters. Now, he doesn't give you those encounters so that you'd have another notch on your belt. He gives you those encounters because in that encounter, there's a, there's a, there's a place of knowing God that anchors you in the spirit. It anchors you in the spirit. People go, well, how could someone die for Jesus? Well, once you've had a, a glory cloud come out of heaven and shock you, no one's going to talk you out of salvation. It's not going to happen, okay? See, why do people love their lives not unto the death, right? How many know the Bible says there's a generation coming who will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they'll love their lives not unto death because they're already dead before they went to the mission field because God has revealed himself to them in such a powerful way Woo, come on, somebody. I want you to get hungry tonight. You know, I don't share these kind of encounters all the time. But I, I, listen, I had this encounter with this glory cloud. It came into my room. I was like, uh, and it lasted about 45 seconds because that's all I could handle. I got scared. 
There's this, and you, listen, how many know that's almost parallel to what happened to Peter, James, and John? Here's Peter, and he's watching Jesus transfigure in front of him, Moses and Elijah, and he goes, hey, it's good for us to be here. How many know he's always saying something dumb? Peter, right? Peter always just says something dumb, but you know what? That's also a strength because he always, sometimes he said something dumb that was good. Like, if it's you, Lord, then tell me to walk out there on the water and come to you. And he got to walk on water. Right? He was, I mean, we all got pluses and minuses, and God will use them all, right? But, but he, he's, like, he's like, you know, it's good for us to be here. Let's build tabernacle for Moses, you know, Elijah, and Jesus. And a glory cloud, the Bible says, comes out of heaven, and they hear the voice of the Father say, listen to my son. See, whenever glory comes like that, you always leave with the revelation of Jesus. If you leave with the revelation of anything else, I question if it's of God. See, how do we know if an encounter is from the Lord? Is it biblical? Does it line up with the word? But also, does it release fruit in your life? And you know what happened? The next day, I got up to preach in that place. And, and we were, this is in the middle of nowhere in Hudson Hope, British Columbia. And I'm preaching. And, 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 and I get up. And, and it's so crazy because we went to breakfast to eat with this lady that was hosting us. And we went to the breakfast. And, and um, she cooks us food. And, and, and as soon as we leave, I give her a hug like this. And as I'm walking out the door, I said, I release peace in this house. And when I said that, I shut the door, went out. She came to the meeting that night bawling her eyes out. And I'm like, what's going on? She had Coke bottle thick glasses on. And she didn't have them anymore. And she's like, you don't understand. And she's like, you know, I told God I wanted to serve the prophets. And, and so I made you a meal. And I told God that I wanted the prophets reward. And, and she said, you gave me a hug, said, let my peace remain. And when you opened the door and left, my, my glasses stopped working. Her glasses stopped working. How I many know oh, Jesus said that if people treat you well, let your peace remain, right? And, and, and he said if they didn't wipe the dust off, well, don't do that part. But hey, listen. Because I don't want to get on the line of like cursing people. That's not goodness, right? But, but I, I, I do that when I'm at people's homes and they're, they're, they totally release blessing into us. I'm like, Lord, let your peace, let your glory. It's an impartation. Yeah. And you know what happened? I went to that meeting and they brought me this, this guy who was in a snowmobile accident. I didn't even get two feet from him and poof, he, he flew off his feet and fell on the ground. God recreated his discs in his back. And then they brought me a little boy, or actually, I'm sorry, a little girl who was very embarrassed because her teeth were real messed up like this, like, like pushed out. And, and I went like this to go pray for her. But before I could put my hands on her, she fell out. And when she got up, she had brand new teeth, perfect set. And I'll never forget it because it was like, God, I can't even touch these people without, like, I, I was trying to do it the old school way, right? Like, let's lay hands, but God was, God was zapping people before I could get there. And you know what the Lord told me? He said, Jeremy, when you encounter my glory, there's another dimension that comes. There's another realm that comes. And, and, and it's not the hand of man, it's the hand of God. And I'm, I'm telling you, God wants to release his hand in this place tonight. And he wants to activate you. And, and one of the key scriptures he gave me tonight is he said this. He said, tell the people that I'm going to activate them in Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4. And it says this, because listen, how many, know that, how many of you know that, that it tells us in Samuel that he was activated in what? Hearing the voice of God. But not just hearing the voice of God, seeing in the spirit too. Because Samuel was a seer prophet. And it says that when he heard the voice of the Lord say, Samuel, it says God also appeared to him. See, God wants to open our eyes. He wants to open our ears. But, but look at this. Specifically, he told me, he said, tonight I'm going to open people's ears. And it says this in Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4. It says, the Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. Morning by morning, he awakens me. And it says, morning by morning, he awakens my ear to hear as the learned. And then it says this, the Lord has opened up my ear. See, God wants to give us a sharp prophetic anointing. He wants us to begin to speak words of life that are like a sword that cut the junk out of people's lives. He wants to give you the tongue of the wise that you would speak words in season to those that are weary. And, and listen, have you ever given a prophetic word to someone who's weary? Listen, they'll drop like flies, even in the middle of Target. How do I know? Because I've done it before. I mean, listen, when, when my wife and I used to live here, uh, you know, uh, we, we need to live here again you know, now, but we used to live here. We moved to L.A. for three and a half years to be a part of H Rock Church with, with uh, Papa Che on there. But, but we used to live all the way down in Chulawana, which means it's past Chula Vista. I mean, like the next stop was the outlets, you know. And, 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 and we used to live down there, and there was two places we go all the time. We go to Walmart, and we go to Target, and we do it almost every week. And we, what were we doing? We'd take teams to go do evangelism. 
And uh, listen, we got so good at it that it was amazing because I would go into an aisle and there would be, uh, you know, this Hispanic couple that were there and I'd be like, hey, I got a word for you. And the guy would go, no English. And the other guy would go, do you speak English? He goes, yeah. I go, hey, then you're my interpreter. He'd be like, what? I said, just tell him what I tell you. And I'd start telling him and that guy would start crying before that guy would start crying. And by the, not by the time you're done, they both get saved. <laughs> And, and, and you know what happens is that God will give you a word in season to people that are weary, and it literally brings them out of darkness and translates them into the kingdom of light. And see, I feel like tonight God's going to infect us. Woo, Jesus. Ah, he's going to open this realm up. See, why do we, why, you know, what's the point? Why are we going to outpouring meetings? Because there's impartation from the king of glory. And every time you go and every time you do it with hunger, you cannot leave the same. You may think that you're the same, but when you leave, you're different because you're carrying something you didn't have before. And oftentimes people don't even know what they got till they go. And they don't even realize what they're carrying until they go outside the church and all of a sudden it explodes. I mean, I'd love it if you guys have heard some of the testimonies about, you know, uh, people that, that are, are used mildly by God. A lot of them didn't even know they got it. That's beautiful. Woo. I mean, I love, you know, Pastor Joel. He, he's not here tonight, but from his house, I remember the first three weeks of the outpouring, you know, he was seeing all the signs and wonders happening, the gold and the oil and all these things. And, and I remember him telling me like, man, why's it not coming on me, man? He's like, am I doing something wrong? I said, no, man, you're good, dude. Just chill. Like, and, and you know what happened? He goes to his church and, and he starts preaching and it comes all over him and he doesn't even know it. The whole congregation's like, uh, uh, and he's like, what, man? You know, it's like on him. And, and, and you know what happened? He had caught something and even when he didn't think he had it, he had it. It went with him. And I mean, I could tell you there's, there's so many stories like that. Whew, I love talking to these guys. They're telling me about all the glory stuff happening in their home and uh, angels coming and all kinds of things that are happening. And, and I, I talk to uh, people all the time that have come up to me. and They're like, hey, you know, I never had dreams before this outpouring, but I have dreams every night. You know, I never heard the voice of the Lord like I'm hearing them now, but I got whacked that one night. And listen, that's why we're here. Why? Because it's about knowing him. And those who, who sought the Lord went where? To the tabernacle of meetings. And listen, the tabernacle of meetings isn't always a comfortable thing. It means that you go outside the camp and sometimes way outside the camp. That's why some of you online, listen, there's so many people online that have come out from far. And it's been amazing to watch them get impartation, take it back and it blows up. I mean, I could tell you story after story, but some more of you need to get out here. And others in Southern California, get out here. Those in San Diego, come. Why? Because encounters are happening. Whoo, Jesus. And not only that, there's a sound being released. There's a sound being released of, of, of revival. And I mean, I love it. You know, I was talking to Ray the other night at In-N-Out. We were at the most spiritual place. And, um, you know, we were eating some burgers. How I many know that's the goodness of God, right? And, and so we're, we're eating some burgers, and he was asking me, like, hey, is, uh, there have been people that have been writing songs out of the outpouring. Yes, a lot of songs have already been written out of the outpouring. And there will be even more songs that will be written out of the outpouring. Why? Because when God pours out his spirit, worship goes off the charts. And not only that, people won't just do a 30-minute set list. We'll have an hour and a half to go for it. Why? Because I don't want to stop. The, listen, I'm not touching the glory when it's moving. Some people go, I don't like the long worship. Listen, you're going to be in hell when you go to heaven because we're going to do nothing but worship. Woo, Jesus. You might as well expand right now. <laughs> Listen, I want you to stand to your feet. Go ahead and, Annie, come on up here. <laughs> Woo. I just feel that the anointing of God at times is more caught than it is taught. And that's what outpouring looks like. How many know that? You can get taught all the messages you want, but you need to get into an atmosphere where God's moving, where he's releasing things. And, and, and listen, here's what the Bible says. A wise man adds to what? His learning. And one of the things I love about what God's doing in this fire and glory outpouring is it's not just about one or two. Or uh, Listen, we've got, we've got several churches that are all together in this thing. And that's just, you know, for now, I believe there's more that are going to come. I mean, there's five right now that are really like, that, that, that are on board. They're leaning into this thing. And that's just on the local side. You know how many there are from afar? H Rock Church, you know, Pie Hop. I mean, that, listen, there's people that come out from LA every week. These guys from Pomona. I, I, 
I mean, God is raising up hunger in Southern California and in the nations. And, and here's the thing is you'll never, set, you're, you'll never catch fire if you don't get where it's being released. Some people go, why do I got to go out there? Because God does it outside the camp at times. Well, why did you do that, God? Because I want to see if you're really hungry for it or not. Listen, you don't, some people, they say, that's easy for you to say. You know, you're the one here that's hosting it. Well, you don't understand. I carry, uh, you know, an international itinerary. I canceled 32 trips this year. Some of you are like, 32? Yeah, I do three in one weekend sometimes. And, and, and we, we're, we're willing to cancel it all for as long as God wants. Why? Because I'm going to be in the place where the tabernacle's at. Because, I, listen, I'm not born to go speak at a conference and get a little honorarium. And, uh, guys, we're born to be a move of God. Listen, if you just want to do conferences and do that stuff, that's awesome. Join the ranks of the tens of thousands of people who, who just want normal Christianity. If you want to walk in fire and you want to walk in glory, you want to be contagious, you want to carry the glory of God on your life. Now listen, I, conferences have their place. I don't, want to be, I'm, I don't want to be insensitive, but what I'm saying is when God's doing something, you do everything you can to get in that place. Why? Because it's a time and a season with the Lord. It's a time and a season with the Lord. And some people, they'll say, well, we don't need to go to extended meetings and revival because we have a culture of revival. Well, listen, I think you're talking about something different because the history books tell us, the history books, not the last theology of the last five years, history books tell us that God releases revival with a capital R to a generation every once in a while. And listen, I don't think we're at Revival with a capital R yet in this thing, but we're pushing into it. What is Revival with a capital R? It's when it arrests a nation, a city, when it arrests a generation, when, when sovereignly the glory of God comes down and someone sneezes at the gas station and they get healed and saved. See, we've got word after word in this generation. God's going to release Revival. Well, listen, I got word for you. He's releasing it. He's releasing it. And what we're doing here is we're just simply, listen, I'll say right now, I don't believe we've fully come into this thing, but what we're doing is we're giving God room. How many know that the church is really good at receiving prophetic words, but we're not so good at birthing them sometimes? Listen, when God speaks and you put action behind it, He moves. And see, I'm prophesying to you tonight. Woo! You're going home with something tonight. <laughs> You're going home with something tonight that you did not come in with. God's going to open up your ear. He's going to give you the tongue of the wise. He's going to put a prophetic anointing upon you so that you can be like who? Like Jesus. How many know that Jesus, right? How many has a sword coming out of his mouth? He has a double-edged sword coming out of his mouth. He slices and dices the chains of the enemy. Well, guess what? So do you and so do I. And he's marking us with glory tonight. Why? Because he wants to set you free. But not only does he want to set you free and heal you, but he wants to raise you up and he wants you to be a part of a generation that makes history. I mean, I don't know about you, but I want to be a part of a generation that it's said of. Those guys changed their city. Those guys changed their schools. Those guys, they turned the world upside down for Jesus. In every sphere of influence, whether it's music, arts, entertainment, sports, whether it's business, whether it's government, listen, God is moving on every mountain of society, but you'll never see a move of God on those mountains if you don't go to his mountain first. What happens on the mountain? Moses was there. So was all the children of Israel. The fire and the glory of God came down on that mountain. And it shook and it trembled and it rumbled. And the, the voice of the Lord spoke. And there was only a few that answered the call. See, but I believe we're in a generation that God is giving the gift of hunger to. Woo! Do you know that we live in a dissatisfied generation? And some people, they go, why are we so dissatisfied? Because Papa God put it in you in the first place. Because he's, he's looking for a generation that will go out of their way. He's looking for a generation that will not look at the religious status quo of what people are doing. Or, or even the thing they call the new thing. Listen, the new thing is what he's doing today. The new thing is what he's saying right now. The new thing is the presence and glory that he's releasing in the moment. And it will birth new things. Woo, Jesus. Here, just put your hands up. Lord, I thank you for the, the rains of heaven tonight. I thank you for the cloud of your spirit, Lord. 
I thank you tonight that you're marking us with impartation. You're marking us with glory. You're marking us with goodness, God. Listen, just start to worship him tonight.